Africa is the continent that has a majority of the longest seven presidents in the world and also the oldest. Paul Bia of Cameroon has been in power for more than 40 years. Denis Sasso Nguesso has also ruled for 39 years, although not at a stretch. And then Uganda's Yoweri Museveni has been in power for more than 37 years. But here is the interesting thing. The longest seven presidents on the continent and even the entire world is not among the men mentioned. It is Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbasogo of Equatorial Guinea. The man came to power in 1979 after a bloody coup against his uncle. Since then, he has held tight to power as an 81-year-old leader, planning on how he will make his son the next president after him. There is more to the story of his rise to power and the way he has managed to last longer than men such as Zimbabwe's Robert Mugabe and Muammar Gaddafi, the strongman of Libya. Now here is his complete story. Teodoro Obiang Nguema was born in 1942. When he was 26 years old in 1968, Spain granted his country independence. By this time, his uncle Francisco Macias Nguema has gained favor with the Spanish government and rose in ranks. In 1968, he won the country's first general election and became president. Francisco Nguema was believed to have suffered from mental illness. This did not show when he started his time as president, but before long, he had a fallout with the Spanish less than a year after taking power. The man who was believed to be a psychopath soon became a dictator. He became dangerous and killed as many as 20 to 50,000 people, including his family members. Now back to Teodoro Obiang Nguema, who stood aside, watching the carnage his uncle continued to bring on the nation. Eleven years after Francisco took power, Teodoro carried out a bloody coup that ended the reign of his uncle. Francisco did not lose his life in the coup, but he was sentenced to death by his nephew. Teodoro accused his uncle of genocide against the Bubi people among other serious crimes. He personally oversaw to the killing of his uncle by firing squad on September 29, 1979. That was how Teodoro Nguema became the president of Equatorial Guinea and the head of the Supreme Military Council. There is a little twist to the story. All the while as Francisco was in power and while he carried out all the atrocities, one person that was very close to him as head of the National Guard was none other than Teodoro. Nonetheless, many were still happy that Francisco was gone for good. The nation celebrated the end of a brutal regime and Teodoro made promises to give the people a fresh start. He showed he meant business by freeing all political prisoners. Of course, the hopes of the nation went high, but it was only the start of another chapter. In 1982, he changed the constitution of the country and guess what? He retained absolute power which smelled more like troubles for the little Central African country. Before then, Nguema ruled the nation under a military regime for three years. He contested for the presidency as the sole candidate and he won by a landslide against himself. He ruled the country for seven years and then contested again in 1989. By this time, you would expect things to have changed, but everything was still the same. He was the sole candidate in the election again. Then came 1996, when he won again, and 2002, when he cleared again. The elections were said to be fraudulent, but that was not enough to stop the man who has been described as one of the most dangerous dictators in Africa. Teodoro Nguema continued to stay in power by winning the 2009 elections, and then he won another seven years in office in 2016, when his party, the Democratic Party of Equatorial Guinea, won the disputed election. Nguema claimed 93.5% of the votes, while his closest rival, Avelino Mochanse of Center-Right Union, got only 1.57%. He established his grip on power in 2022, when he won the presidential election for the seventh time. The man has won seven consecutive presidential elections, with landslide victories of over 90% of the votes. All the while, Nguema has also amended the constitution several times to extend his term limits, 
increase his powers and grant himself immunity from persecution. If you are now wondering if he has done any better than his uncle whom he killed, the answer is not simple. The government of Nguema has been criticized for many things including corruption, nepotism and oppression. Many have described him as one of the worst of all dictators including Idi Amin of Uganda and Sani Abacha of Nigeria. There are allegations that he did not only kill those against him, but he has also been accused of cannibalism among other unspeakable crimes. There were claims in 2016 that the dictator had no problem skinning his enemies alive before feasting on their testicles and brains. Described as the torturer-in-chief Nguema, his close associate once claimed on the radio that Teodoro was in constant communication with God and so he could do whatever he wanted including taking the lives of people and he wouldn't go to hell. In 2003, he was equated to God in the country by a state-owned radio station. Now, you may wonder how the man has held on to power for more than 40 years. Well, it is because he has had many forces behind him. First, Nguema has had a good grip on the army to ensure that he is not a victim of any coup. As a former military man under the Spanish government, before he joined the forces of Equatorial Guinea, Teodoro Nguema is security smart. This is what made it possible for him to survive more than 10 attempted coups as well as assassination attempts. Another thing that has worked in his favor is that he has ensured that the country does not face any civil war that would undermine his control. Equatorial Guinea has a population of less than 2 million people and the nation is known to be very rich in terms of oil. However, President Nguema has been accused of using poverty as a way of holding on to power. Amidst all this, while the people are poor, the nation is not, and the president is one of the richest heads of state in the world. Forbes once claimed Nguema has a net worth of more than $600 million. While she may not be Grace Mugabe, the wife of Teodoro Obiang Nguema, Constancia, has also played a big role in ensuring that her husband continues to remain in power. Reports have it that even as his power continues to wane due to age, Constancia has been working very hard to ensure that power does not leave the family after her husband bows out. As a matter of fact, the president and his wife are working hard to ensure that his son, Teodoro Nguema Obiang Mangui, takes after him. The younger Nguema is now in his 50s. In 2012, Nguema made his son the second vice president of the country before he was moved to the office of the first vice in 2016. Teodoro knows that with age not on his side anymore, his time in power is also coming to an end and so he has changed the constitution of the country to make it easy for the first vice president, which is his son, to take over after him. Sadly, the president's son is not making things easy for himself. He has been involved in many controversies in the past, including lavish spending and corruption charges. He has had to slog it out with authorities in different countries including the United States, where his family is alleged to have hidden money in Riggs Bank in Washington, as well as in Paris and the United Kingdom. What this means for the younger Nguema is that it will be difficult for him to succeed his father since he does not have a good standing with international community and he doesn't have any serious domestic support either. If the longest ruling president succeeds in installing his son after him, he will achieve the establishment of a family dynasty since he took over from his uncle and now he is handing over to his son. At the moment, his other son, Gabriel Obiang, is a minister in the country while another, Roslang Obiang, was also in government before he was arrested by his half-brother, Theodorin, for allegedly selling the country's aircraft without following due process. The move is believed by some to be nothing short of a succession battle between the brothers, even though Mangwe is closer to the finish line than Roslan. And now what may end up being his sole legacy? Equatorial Guinea rose to have the highest adult literacy rate in sub-Saharan Africa, which is put at 95%.